So that's the MOU that you're interested in. How about actually who runs it, Asphalt Green? It doesn't matter. Okay. As long as that community charter exists, okay. that will be that would be the litmus test that would would say the community's being yeah, have served. Yeah, fry. And Asphalt Green not believe in the best interests of our community. We don't believe that it protects our kids, it doesn't protect our teens, it doesn't protect our seniors. And we would like to see a revision. You will be hearing why in a moment. This contract funnels millions of taxpayer dollars to a facility and doesn't provide them with an incentive to protect our community. Thank you for all coming, and I think if we join together, for the more of us, our voices can be heard. Uh, we have some people who want to speak to you. Uh, Mark Costello, our former president of the downtown Liberty, could not be here, but he prepared something, and Joe Moran would like to, would like to read that for us. Joe? We worked to get the fields, and then the fields with, uh, with artificial turf, my name is Bill Martino, and I'm the president of Downtown Little League. I've been a member of the Downtown Little League and Downtown Community since uh, 2003. I have two children, they're ages 16 and 11. Wow. Uh, the uh, business model of Asphalt Green, I'm not putting Asphalt Green down, by the way. However, I'm concerned that the way their business model operates and what happened uptown was that they ended up taking over uh, a couple of new sports operations that were volunteer driven many years ago. Uh, very cost effective. Uh, members uh, of, of a wide variety of uh, were able to participate in these sports. That no longer is the case. Uh, our league downtown really can charge $150 for folks <laughs> young men, uh, boys and girls to play baseball and softball. My fear is that if we lose our permits, that if at any point downtown Little League and downtown soccer league are taken over by Asphalt Green. Uh, the children will not be able to play for $150 for the uh, my, my children will not be able to participate at much higher cost. Uh, we definitely need to take a, a harder look at the contracts. We need to look at the permitting contracts that we have for downtown soccer and down, uh, downtown Little League. Uh, we have no assurances for the future that we'll have our permits. Uh, so we need to be uh, aware of that and we need to Thank you, Bill. We have Bill Bielaski, also president of Downtown Soccer League. Thank you, Marshall. Um, as Marshall said, I'm Bill Bialas, the president of Downtown Soccer League. I've been running the league now for six years. Children. Um, we think that the Downtown Soccer League and the Downtown Little League are instrumental in and resonant of the vibrant success that the New York City and the community enjoys. Um, we, fear, we have fears, though, that they are our concern today is really for the preservation of the long term use of the ball field by community organized leagues such as the PSF and the DLL. And ensuring adequate and affordable access to the community center uh, by the broadest base possible. Uh, we fear a future 
order when the commercial operator of the community center, whoever that may be, is no longer receiving a subsidy and large payrolls to meet. The balance sheet does not balance and the operations of small companies outsourced to the operator for the sake of a self-sustaining budget. Is there a future when years of promises and memorandums of understanding provide the community leagues access to the ball as well as the indoor facility will be brushed aside and forgotten in the operator's quest for revenue? We fear for the future of community-run volunteer leagues which depend upon expanding access to open space to grow every year and being squeezed out. The answer, we believe, is a community charter that is spelled for what the expectation is for the operation Whatever the operator is, that this community charter becomes the, the overlay for the RFP and ensures that we have this affordable access to the community center and that we can maintain the ball field use by the community groups that are presently using it and the ones that the community board and the community at large decides are worthy of its use. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you, Bill. We have Nancy Rosen, resident. What about, I I was under the understanding that the asphalt green from the David, like we 09 or something, when asphalt green was chosen, that the, you guys were guaranteed use of the field at a really cheap rate. Is that not? Uh, we, well, the, there is no real guarantee what we have right now. We've been successful working with uh, Gail Horowitz on her way out the door here yeah. to get the BPCA authority to adopt a resolution that now has gone to multi-year permits, which is very helpful to us. Okay. That is huge to be able to get a three-year permit. Okay. We are now looking, uh, ideally it would be a longer period of time because we have to cycle through our volunteer corps to focus on the politics of the field space where they can't focus on offering programs. So a multi-year program we're hope, permit we hope will line up with the uh, our group of uh, volunteers so that we can cycle through volunteers in leadership role. Uh, and, and that and, sounds like the memorandum of understanding. Yes, right. And what, what but, our worry is just that our experience is then that the, there was a memorandum of understanding in not the past yet signed. with, with an Kavanaugh. An, o, an, an old 10. One. An earlier an, one. An 01. Yeah, an and 01. they wanted to get one revised in 010. Exactly. And, and it's the not one yet. in 01, he ignored the one in 01 that we had. We lost permit time between the two memorandums of understanding. Okay. okay. Which just means that it's taught us that we the memorandum of understanding isn't something that uh, we think we should live in memoriam in any way. We, that's why we'd like to see a community charter that covers everybody's interests for the community. And how, so that's the MOU that you're interested in. How about yeah. actually who runs it, Asphalt Green? Well, it or, doesn't matter. Okay. As long as that community charter exists, okay. that will be, that would be the litmus test that would, would say the community's being yeah, served. Right. Great. Fair enough, thanks. <laughs> What it was, it's understanding that the fields have been reassured to still be allowed to be used by any all the existing leagues, which is soccer, baseball, and so forth. What's the save our fields about? We would like there really is. We don't, I'm not aware of any reassurance. I would like to see that in writing. If you tell me that that's in writing, then and you're concerned it'll I'm go gonna, where? I'm, what would happen I'm to? I'm going to be much less concerned about this. Oh, you mean, are you concerned they'll be taken over by asphalt green or built upon? I don't like to use the phrase turned over. You know, turned over to or taken over by, um, but it makes sense to me that a community center that abuts on its longest side, a beautiful field like this, is going to want to, it probably needs to implement some sort of program to run fields. And did, did the Upper East Side take over uh, sports programs as a precedent? My, my understanding is they took over some local, they took over, they took over some local sports leagues. They took over meaning that they, 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 they their programs ended up coming in place. Fair enough. Can you repeat your name again? I'm sorry. Marshall. And you used to be with the Little League? I'm a former member of the, 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 the board of the Thanks. Thank you.